This is Eric with uh, DIY Guitar Pedals. Going again over another uh, schematic here. We're going to take a look at what's going on inside a chorus pedal and see what kind of makes it tick. I'm trying to stay out of getting too complicated because there is a lot going on there. But um, yeah, we're going to dive into the schematic here in a little bit. But first, just want to go over a little bit of what a chorus pedal should sound like. Here we go. Alright, this is the Lich King Chorus. This is our DBE project for an analog chorus pedal. Has your standard depth and rate knobs, and it has a toggle switch here to switch between normal mode and clone, which basically changes the timing on the bucket brigade chip to kind of give it either the normal sound or the sound that a small clone would have. It also has a toggle switch here to switch between true chorus and a vibrato mode, and then obviously a stomp switch and an LED to indicate it's on. So let's get our clean tone here. We have the depth knob here at about 3 o'clock and the rate knob at about 10 o'clock. Let's take a listen. Here we have our depth knob pushed a little bit further beyond 3 o'clock and our rate knob dialed back to about 8 o'clock. Let's hear what that sounds like. Here we have the clone mode enabled, and the depth knob at around 1 to 2 o'clock, and the rate mode at around eh, 9 o'clock. And let's hear how that clone mode sounds. <music> Lastly, we have the vibrato mode enabled. This kind of gives the pedal a little bit of a Leslie feel. We have the depth knob set to about 3 o'clock and the rate knob set to about 12. And let's uh, give a listen to what the vibrato sounds like coming out of this pedal. Alright, so let's take a look here at what's going on inside of a chorus pedal. So typically, whenever a chorus pedal is designed, one of the first things that comes up is going to be the LFO, which is the low frequency oscillator. This will be used to drive a clock device, which is usually a voltage controlled oscillator. Now this clock device is what's going to be timing the bucket brigade device, your BBD, in this case, we're going to be using an MN3207, or if one can be found, an MN3007, uh, barring that it's not a fake off of eBay. Now, BBDs are clumsy devices, so because of that, we're going to need some filtering on that input, which in turn is coming from your guitar, and then you're going to also have to filter your output, which in that in turn is going to your amp. And that's pretty much the idea of what goes on uh, from a circuit topology of what you're going to find in a chorus pedal. But let's uh, take a look at the Lich King Chorus's actual schematic and really get into it. Alrighty, so this is the schematic for the Lich King Chorus, which was based around the idea of John Hollis's original uh, zombie chorus, but this was basically my take on it. Uh, so what we got here is we got it broken up into six pieces. We have the input buffer, the power supply, the LFO, the bucket brigade device, the output filter, and the clock driver. Uh, for controls, we have the ability to control the speed or rate in which the chorus is fluctuating. We have the ability to control the depth of the modulation to the signal. We have the ability to control the delay of the timing device feeding the bucket brigade, which, though it's not actually doing, it makes it kind of sound like 
it's going between your traditional 1024 stage BBD and cutting it down in half and making it kind of sound like a 512. It's not what it's exactly doing, but it kind of gives that sound. We have the ability to separate the wet and dry signals from each other. Um, breaking the dry signal out changes the chorus effect into more of a vibrato effect. Bringing it back in obviously brings it as a chorus effect. The uh, other extra special thing we got with this guy is we have the ability to use not just the MN3007, which is becoming excruciatingly, excruciatingly hard to find, uh, if you find them anywhere, like eBay or Alibaba, nine times out of ten, it's probably a fake, and it doesn't do anything. Um, so, for sake of using chips that uh, can be readily available, you can usually find on certain sites the MN3207 or a clone thereof. The only difference is, is the MN3207 has its polarity different than what is found on the MN3007. So with these jumpers, you have the ability to flip that around. So we're going to start here with the power supply of the of the pedal here. Uh, first off, we have a diode here, a Zener diode, to protect the circuit from getting out of control with voltage. Uh, you don't want to pop your BBD device that cost you a pretty penny. Um, after that, we have a, a voltage divider here, but we also use a trimmer pot in the center there to fine-tune that voltage division so that we get a very, very, very close to 4.5 volts for the biasing of not just the op amps but uh, the signal going into the bucket brigade device. Uh, bucket brigades are very picky so you have to be very very spot on with your biases with those or bad stuff happens. <laughs> um, we have a, uh, a filter here. Um, this is kind of an interesting way of tackling uh, noise coming on your 9 volt rail. This is what is known as a Pi CRC second order low pass filter. Um, this is set up to basically uh, cut off uh, drastically after 22 hertz. Uh, this is basically so that you uh, reject any like high frequency harmonics which are uh, specifically really bad for BBDs and get really irritating too because they ex accentuate the uh, clicking noise that your clock driver might be creating. So this is the input buffer stage of the Lich King chorus. Uh, the purpose of this is to basically create a high impedance uh, so to pre preserve the signal, signal integrity and avoid any high frequency signal loss. Um, in this case we're going to be using a non-inverting op amp topology to do that and between the R3 and R4 it's going to spit out a little bit of a gain about one and a half times. So we're using the TLO62 uh, because it is a low power op amp it generates little electrical noise which is going to be suitable for what we're doing uh, being as we're trying to avoid any ticking issues that might come later down the line from that CD4046. We have the R1 traditional uh, pop resistor here, or I should say anti-pop resistor. Uh, we also have a capacitor here in line, which is designed to block any DC voltages coming from the input. Uh, on top of that, we also have a little bit of a uh, high-pass filter here, uh, with C1 and R2 that basically is blocking off really really low frequencies like 16 Hertz and below basically trying to get rid of some of the, any of that uh, ripple noise that might be coming in and of course we have the op amp being biased to four and a half volts and because of the setup right here between R1 and R2 uh, we have a input impedance of around 5 mega ohm which is pretty good this is the core of the chorus pedal here this is the bucket brigade device stage so let's talk about the two BBD chips that you're going to be populating in here. The first one, the original, the OG, the MN3007. This thing has been in, found in such great hits as the Boss CE1 and the Boss CE2. And 90% of the stuff that you listened to back in the 80s when you were listening to new wave music. This thing has been everywhere. It sounds great. It's natural. It's great sound. The other one that you can use is the MN3207. This is the new school. Uh, this one you can find in such stores online without worrying about it being a fake. The differences between the two, the 3007 uh, is a PMOS based technology whereas the 3207 is an NMOS. Basically it just means the power rails are flip flopped. The uh, 30 or the 3007, it has a uh, delay range between 5 and 50 milliseconds, 
where the 3207 actually has a slightly larger range of 2.5 milliseconds to 50 milliseconds. But that's okay either way because to get a coarse effect you just need a delay between 5 and 40 typically. So now we're looking at the clock device, the uh, CD4046. Uh, we're looking at the buffered one because that's what you need to use to make this work. What we have here is a a internal voltage controlled oscillator. That's what the CD4046 will be doing. And you can set basically the speed of what the frequency is on the VCO by the value of capacitance here between pins 6 and 7. And in this case we have the ability of either going with 1000 picofarad which sets it to the traditional 10,024 stage sound or cutting it in half capacitors in series that will uh, give it more of a 512 stage BBD sound. It's not actually cutting the stages on the BBD down to that it's just changing the frequency of the of the oscillation to make it sound like that. This is where a lot of the magic happens in a chorus pedal. This is the low frequency oscillator circuit. Basically it's a dual op amp setup where the first op amp is going to provide a square wave for an oscillation and that will be controlled here by this right knob that will change the frequency and amplitude of that uh, square wave and then that feeds into the second op amp which is then turned into a triangle wave which can be changed around with this or adjusted I should say with this depth knob let's take a look on the oscilloscope and see how that looks okay we're here at the oscilloscope and we have the Lich King chorus powered on and hooked up to it kinda looks like it's being hooked up to life support but uh, don't worry it's uh, doing what it's supposed to here so we have both the depth and rate knobs cranked all the way up to max so let's uh, take a look at uh, the LFO here and see what happens when we mess with some things so the first thing we have is the first op amp of the LFO which is controlled by the rate knob that creates that square wave but as you see as I start to dial it down the wave loses its amplitude and loses its frequency and it's forcing the triangle wave to conform with it and if I bring the rate knob back up the square wave returns back to form the depth knob is just a means of controlling the triangle wave itself so as I dial back the depth knob you'll see that the, my triangle wave here starts getting shallower and shallower and shallower until it's practically flat and then we'll bring it right back up and that's what the low frequency oscillator is doing inside of a chorus pedal alright and this is the last part of the schematic right here this is the output uh, with our output we have a Salen key filter which we use to basically get rid of all the harmonics or oddball harmonics and unexpected noises that we don't want coming out of the BBD and then going to the guitar amp things like ticking <laughs> uh, it's kind of a nice setup here because it gives a, a high input impedance and a low output impedance uh, it's kind of what sound key filters do and that's what you want right before your output going to the amp the other thing to note here is the dry signal coming up to the summing resistor here, R5, which goes to a switch, which comes into the output feed of the wet signal. The, uh, the reason for this is basically all chorus pedals are just vibrato with a dry signal being brought in. So if you take the dry signal out, your chorus pedal is now just a vibrato pedal, and that's it. And that's what this switch does. It makes and breaks the dry signal coming in or not. From there we have the decoupling capacitor C5 and we have a pull down resistor here R11 which creates a high pass filter blocking DC voltages and DC low frequency type stuff around the one and a half hertz mark just basically getting rid of any excess junk that you don't need coming out to the amp. And that's pretty much it. Let me know if you guys uh, understood this if you want to see more things like this or you don't want to see more things like this but I thought it would be just a little different to explain what's going on underneath the hood 
I can get into more detail if you guys want, give you the math and the functions and the frequencies so you can change and manipulate all the values of all the resistors and caps and diodes and whatever you want to change around. But uh, yeah, just let me know what you think in the comments. Cheers.